Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from inside ETFs in Hollywood, Florida. And joining us is Sylvia Jablonski. She's a Managing Director of Capital Markets Institutional ETF Strategy at Direction. We're going to take a look at short-term trade ideas and where the flow is going. It's great to have you back with us. Thanks for As me. always, and Outlook for 2020. January started off, I think, in a way nobody had expected between um, some geopolitical events, the coronavirus. There's just a lot going on. We're 27 days in to the year. Has your outlook changed at all? You know, it really hasn't. And, and I think that what's interesting about this year is that it, it's it's so it, it's so sort of like news and, and headline driven. So mm-hmm. the virus is the thing that might pull back the markets. You know, we had the potential war with Iran, as you mentioned, that was the thing that might pull back the markets. And all we've really seen is that investors are going into this news and sort of buying on the dips, um, which is al- almost a continuation of what happened in December and and the start of the year. But, you know, I, I maintain and, and believe that there are still a lot of good short term opportunities and, and you know, bullish trends that are coming our way for the next few months. And that's what's good about the volatility, because we didn't have much of that in 2018, 2019, for sure. So to um, acquire some uh, shares on at better levels or just to be able to trade around some of these themes. um, One of that is the current state of the economy from a macro perspective. Slowing, but it's still growing. Right. So consumers still strong. Job numbers are the best they've been in, in 50 years. We're starting to see some refurbishing of PMI numbers around the globe. We have a trade deal now. And I think that, you know, the biggest things that were holding us back last year are, are you know, sort of two issues that are mainly resolved or on the way to being resolved. And one is a dovish supportive Fed. And number two is a, is a deal with China. So we signed phase one there. And I think, you know, all of those things really brought some momentum into the market. And all of the sectors that, you know, finished off last year started the year strong. So, you know, tech semiconductors, for example, they had triple digit returns. And we saw a ton of flow into those names. And actually, they're continuing. And the buy on the dip opportunities are there right now. All right. Now let's talk about some of the short term trade ideas. Clearly, oil was a really interesting one when we had the news with the um, Iran strike, although short lived. What are some examples, if you were to use a direction ETF, that you could have played that short term move? Sure. So for oil specifically, um, there's an ETF called Gas L, and there's an ETF called Gush, and an ETF called XLE, which are basically 3x. The first one is 3x gas, oil and gas related. The second is oil, gas, and energy related. And then the third is essentially... um, the ETF, say? basically, oh, sorry, like energy. Yeah, energy. Yeah. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. But yeah, so I, you know, what we had there is a potential war with Iran, sanctions, any kind of news about you know a diminishing in in the output and in, in the production of oil that we have. You know, if any of that kind of comes into the market, a short term trade on that for a day or two would have yielded two, five, six, seven percent single digits because essentially oil started to rally, energy started to rally around those things. So the biggest thing there, though, is that you know there there is an oversupply of oil in the market. Market. So until that, you know, sort of shrinks down long term, and unless we have a major geopolitical issue, you know, longer term it might not pop. But around new centric trades, this three X short term opportunity is there, and that's where the direction ETFs come well, in. You get extra juice from that as well because it's lever, right? So it's it's for every hundred dollars you invest, you have three hundred dollars of exposure to the underlying index. Mm-hmm. So that means essentially whatever the return of that index is, multiply it by three, you know, minus fees, expenses, mm-hmm. disclosures, things like that. But you know, five percent move, fifteen percent in a day, and there's certainly but for short-term tactical traders. Right, right. So, Especially if you're on the right side of the trade. You don't exactly. want to be holding that long-term and not. But let's look at uh, other short-term trade opportunities. Healthcare is certainly going to be one going into election year. Um, China, definitely. Yeah, so so healthcare, I think, is... is a really great opportunity to look at. You know, first of all, a lot of these companies pay great dividends. Second of all, we have more pre-approvals and approvals in the pipeline for healthcare companies than ever before. Um, a lot of these names are essentially, you know, well diverse, and 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 they include everything from care minute clinics to medical devices to insurance plans to actually drugs and prescriptions. And you have 73 million aging and baby boomers that are going to be the consumers of healthcare late cycle. China, so again, trade deal. Um, you've got trade deal and, and I think a lot of stimulus from China, particularly if we see this from the coronavirus, mm-hmm. if PBOC continues to stimulate, you're going to see China A shares do well and you're going to see China A shares do well off of the trade deal. Now what else is interesting in China is actually technology as well. They have the fastest growing middle class, they're massive adopters and users of technology. So they're big on fintech, you know, wireless payments, um, Alibaba, they're online shoppers. So all of those names are in an index and an ETF like C-Web gives you exposure to that. And I 
really think you'll see a lot of growth in Chinese disruptive technology. Oh, well, I mean, the big concern there is getting the coronavirus contained because if right. you can't get people out to shop because they're stuck in their homes yes. or if it gets even you know more pandemic than that, um, that can certainly impact the economy. Because that was like with, with the SARS issue, it, that really did impact their economy when that was out years ago. Right. I mean, you're talking about, you know, Apple has had a, a major boost and that's also boosted technology indices mm -hmm. and technology ETFs like ours, um, TECL. But what happens is, if, like as, as you said, if in China, a lot of people are staying home and you don't get that 18, 19% part of the revenue coming from China yeah. because people can't you know, essentially shop, that, that does affect the growth story. Uh, I think it's a longer term thing, mm -hmm. but you know, so you know, so far we're a weekend. But like, let's see what happens. Right, like, it, it could be an issue. That's going to be an outlier. All right, great to catch up with you as always. Thanks for Me joining too. us. Thank you. And thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.